Please avoid saying that you cannot access your blood. Just relax. Everything that is in there, you will be able to access it. Okay. Okay. Uh, please write your name on the chat box, Drexel. Then we'll start. It's 11.35 already. There was uh, one that he kept on saying, teacher, teacher, teacher. And he shouted him to refresh the page. Okay. He was able to access the book. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of the Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for this time again that we can learn from one another. Uh, we praise you for all the things that you have done for us and through us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. And more importantly, Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yes, forgiveness for all the things that you have done and for the things that we haven't done. As we remember those right now who are in most need of you, please meet them in their needs. We ask forgiveness for our shortcomings, our limitations, and our weaknesses. Be in our needs right now. I pray for myself that I will be able to uh, discuss the lesson in a manner that my students will fully understand and recall easily when it's time for them to apply already these particular things that I'm going to discuss. I pray for focus. I pray for understanding in my students. I pray for wisdom and knowledge. Let your spirit descend in our midst that we may be, uh, have, that we will have a fruitful uh, meeting today. This we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us with Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, good morning, everyone. Okay, all right, huh? I just make sure that we have a new sheet. In all capital letters, write the certification of your application of the book. Thank you. I can still see it. Thank you. 
Okay, so we will be discussing for today steel convection, but this time natural convection. And by the way, let me just pause the recording. Yes. 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 I will now share my screen. Okay, so we're now on convective heat transfer and now on natural convection because we're done with forced convection. So for the intro, so when we speak of natural convective heat transfer, this occurs for a solid surface. Oftentimes, it's involving a solid surface in contact with the fluid. So the fluid can be a gas or liquid, which of course is expected to be at a different temperature from that of the surface. Okay. Then in here, density differences in the fluid arising from the heating process. So in the, in the course of the heating process, because your fluid and your surface are at different temperature, these density differences provide the what? So it provides the buoyancy force required to move the fluid. So since this is natural convection, it is now these differences in the density of the fluid that will provide the buoyant force for it to move freely. And that is natural uh, movement without the use of any pump whatsoever. Next. Uh, free or natural con uh, convection is observed as a result of the motion of the fluid. So it's a, an extension of this statement here. So free or natural convection is expected because of this uh, buoyancy force provided by the density differences between your fluid, a gas or liquid, and the solid in which it is in contact with, but again, it should be at a different temperature from it. Okay? Now... Uh, what are applications of natural convection? So natural convection heat transfer is extensively used in the following areas of engineering. Okay, so cooling of commercial high voltage electrical power transformers. So the cooling there is natural. And then heating of houses by electrical baseboard heaters. In the case of this heating of houses by electrical baseboard heaters, uh, this does not happen in here in the Philippines. This is more on the western part of the globe. Okay. Now heat loss from steam pipelines in power plants and heat gain in refrigerant pipes in air conditioning applications. So this is also heat loss, uh, convective heat loss. Now, as to cooling of reactor cores in nuclear power plants, though often the coolant is driven by pumps, resulting in more efficient heat transfer, this is by force convection, but there is also cooling that is uh, natural. Okay. Cooling of electronic devices in the case of chips and transistors, I think you can fully understand this one, by finned heat sinks. So heat sinks class, uh, heating equipments, fin that is they have some extensions on the edges uh, through a fan is often present to augment the natural convection with forced convection. So the use of the fan in here is a uh, forced convection. However, uh, cooling also naturally uh, occurs even if without this fan. This is just to hasten the rate of cooling, the use of the fan. Because if we're just simply going to use natural convection in these cases, class, sometimes the cooling process will take time. So that is why they are using fans in this case to augment. So the term that was used is augment natural convection. And that is specifically, as I have mentioned, to increase the rate of heat transfer. Okay. Um, actually, if we uh, let a particular heated object stand just in, a, in its environment without uh, any equipment to, uh, let's say, fan off uh, the vicinity of that particular solid with, high uh, with increased temperature, it would still cool down. Uh, that's in the thing that you have learned in differential equations. It will still cool down uh, by what we call Newton's law of cooling. However, it lasts then the process of heat, uh, rate of heat transfer is lower. So that is why they're using these fans, uh, these uh, 
big thing like with blades, that way uh, there would be forced convection that will augment or increase the rate of heat transfer. Okay. Now, so we go now, excuse me, class, huh? Thank you for waiting class. So now we go to vertical planes in cylinders. So um, this is for vertical planes in cylinders in which the height is less than one meter. So I have skipped this particular part here from our book by Jen Kupli. So this is our um, dimensionless number still the nozzle number that would lead us to the heat transfer to efficient h so you have here the length or the height of this particular plane or cylinder and you have here the uh, conductivity constant of the material now your a and m that appears here you have this excuse me this a and this M here, the exponent, are constants that should be taken from a particular table. I will show to you the table in a little while. Then the Grasshoff number is a new uh, dimensionless number that is being introduced in this empirical equation. Then you have the density, you have the viscosity, you have the positive temperature difference here between the wall and the bulk fluid. So it, since it's positive temperature difference, so either which it could be bulk fluid minus wall temperature or wall temperature minus bulk fluid, as long as the value that you're going to substitute for delta T is positive. Your K is the thermal conductivity constant. CP is the heat capacity. And you have beta. This is beta class, the volumetric coefficient of expansion of the fluid. So it's one over the given temperature in Kelvin. For gases, this volumetric coefficient of expansion is one over the product of the Kelvin temperature and that of the film temperature. Now, the film temperature is evaluated just like in forced convection as the average of the wall temperature and the bulk fluid temperature. So you take the sum of the two and divide it by two. Your K is the gravitational constant. Now, just like in force convection, so all physical properties should be evaluated at the film temperature. So now, in general, for a vertical cylinder with length L in meter, the same equations can be used for a vertical plate. So this equation that you have is both applicable for... Uh, a vertical plate or a vertical cylinder. Now, if we're talking about English units class, so this would be the formula for the beta, your volumetric coefficient of expansion in unit one over Rankine, and your G is, of course, learn this in physics, 32.174. This should be multiplied by 3,600 squared. Now, it will correspondingly have now the unit in feet per hour squared. And this one is, uh, uh, what do you think is the unit of the G from physics for 32.174? The gravitational constant, this is feet per second squared. Okay. What's the difference between the G and the G sub C from P6? So this is your G in English, 32.174 feet per second squared. What's its difference with the G sub C? G sub C is conversion of pound mass to pound force. Is it pound mass to pound force? Or how do you correct this one? How do you polish this one? This is?
the G sub C. The G sub C is the what? Let me annotate. I have discovered this also in my students before. They don't know the unit of the G sub C. Your G for English is 32.174 feet per second squared. What about G sub C? What's the unit for the G sub C? Set units only because we know that the G sub C would be the same as this one. Okay, it depends on the location actually. Let me check. Second squared pound force pound mass. Very good. Who is this? Dexel. Correct. So that's the set of units. The purpose of the G sub C is to convert the set units, the set units, which is pound mass, feet per second squared to pound force. So this is the entire set of units of your G sub C. It's very different than the G only, which is 32.174 feet per second. Now take note, class, that for this particular formula, uh, this is the problem. That is why uh, when I discuss empirical equations and formulas, sometimes or most of the time I snip that particular copy or I snip a picture of that particular part in your book because there are so many things to consider in terms of units. So we thought that your 32.174 in here for the G would just be okay. But take note, it has to be converted to the set units feet per hour squared. So instead of just simply using 32.174, you are to multiply it with the square of 3,600 to make the unit feet per hour squared. Primarily because class, when you speak of the English units, most of the time units are in hours. So take note of this, okay? It's normally the cause of error for a majority of the students. Now, since the Grasshoff number is being introduced in here, what is its uh, representation? Or shall I say, uh, what does it represent? So your Grasshoff number is another dimensionless number that represents this time the ratio of the buoyancy forces to the viscous forces in free convection. So it's only used in free convection or natural convection. So that is why you haven't encountered it in the topic under forced convection. And this plays a role similar to that of Reynolds number in forced convection. So we don't have Reynolds number here anymore in free convection, but rather in lieu of that, we use the Grasshoff number. And you have this Grasshoff number in here, okay? Now, let me minimize this one. Now, the table that is mentioned in here, class, you are to get the constants A and M that appear in the formula here. Uh, you're going to get it from this particular table, A and M. It depends on the orientation of your surface, so the physical geometry. So this is for physical planes and cylinders with vertical height less than one meter. This one, this set, this set here, so you have three sets actually. The first set is for the one that I've just read a while ago. The second set is for horizontal cylinders. Diameter here is used instead of the length and the diameter should be 0.2 meters or less than specifically 0.2 meters take note for this is for horizontal cylinders now the third grouping is for horizontal plates now you have two conditions here upper surface of heated plates or lower surface of cooled plates or the other orientation is lower surface of heated plates or upper surface of cooled plates. So you have the corresponding here values of the product of the two dimensionless numbers, the Grasshoff number and the frontal number. So depending on the product of these two, you are to pick the corresponding, uh, shall I say, pair of constants A and M. So for a particular product of NGR and NPR value, you will get a pair of A and M here. So whichever is your problem falling into in terms of the geometry, so you select and then you need the, the product of these two, the Grasshoff number and the frontal number. Okay. 
Okay, let me proceed. Uh, this one is a sample problem from the book, which I have snipped right away because uh, it's just a substitution to the set of formula to save us some time. So in here, in the first sample problem, you have natural convection from a vertical wall of an oven. So we know that an oven radiates heat, okay? So at its wall, sometimes if you're going to touch it, you'll even be uh, burnt if it's like, uh, if you're using it actually. So in here, we have natural convection, convective heat transfer from the wall, of course, of an oven that is in use. Now a vertical wall, heated that is one foot, or that's equivalent to 0.3 meters in height, uh, for baking food with the surface at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, equivalent to 505.4 Kelvin, is in contact with air at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 311 Kelvin. In this case, calculate the heat transfer coefficient and the heat transfer rate. Now, the heat transfer rate last year, no, notice, is now set in the unit heat transfer per foot. Uh, that is per foot of the exposed wall of your heated oven. So, uh, width of the wall. So, note that heat of transfer for radiation is not considered. Now, class, in cases wherein this particular statement is not mentioned in the problem, you are to consider also radiative heat transfer. So in this case, in one problem, you will apply two heat transfer modes. That is natural convection and radiative heat transfer. But in this case, to simplify it, that way uh, the author will only illustrate the use of the empirical equation that he introduced, then this statement was added. So note that heat transfer via radiation is not considered or shall we say negligible in value compared to convective heat transfer. Now in this problem, you will use both the English and the SI units. So the first thing that was done in here, although in the solutions that I have discussed with you before, we always start with the working equation. If you notice and if you have started reading your soft copies of the book, it's always starting with, the author always starts with the uh, data that he will be using. So it's also good that this one, this procedure is also good. That is if you know already where you're going or what's your route in finding the solution. So you find the data that you will need. But sometimes starting with the formula will also lead you to the information that you will be uh, needing. So you looking at the formula, you will see the parameters or the constants that you need to determine. So that is why you're going to go to the appropriate table or figure for such formula. So in here, uh, John Kuplis again started with finding the physical properties. That is of air because air here is the fluid in which the heated wall of your oven is going to uh, transfer heat uh, to. Okay, so the physical properties of our air class, just like in forced convective heat transfer, should be based on the film temperature. So you can see that the wall temperature here, which is 450 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, is averaged with the box temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see here the box temperature of the air. Notice class, again, if you're very observant, there was no mention about the air temperature as it passes through the wall and after it already passed through the wall. So in that case, the provided temperature is already the bulk temperature. Uh, this one, the 100 degree Fahrenheit. So you get the average of that, that would be 275 degrees in Fahrenheit. In Kelvin, that would be 408.2 Kelvin. So knowing this, you can now get the parameters or the values uh, that you will be needing. So the values that you will be needing are density, you have the CP, you have the mu, and you have the thermal conductivity constant, and you have the uh, frontal number and the grasshop number. Okay, these are the values that you need if you're going to use this formula to find the H, and that's your heat transfer coefficient. So that is why we go back to our problem. 
uh, these values were sought first. So you have the thermal conductivity constant of the air. So both the SI and the, uh, the English and the SI units were uh, determined or uh, taken from the appropriate table. So it's in the appendix of the book, or you can use section two of your handbook. You have the density, also two sets of units, the frontal number, the viscosity in centipois. Notice this one. The viscosity in centipois was multiplied to 2.4191. This is the same uh, multiplier that you will encounter later on in your SEPA, which will convert the centipois to the set unit pound mass per foot per hour. You will also be needing the same expression later on, next uh, SEM and SEPA. So when centipois is to be converted to the set units, you need this constant to be multiplied to it, 2.4191. So that would give the set of units um, in pound mass foot per hour or in pascal seconds, it's 2.32 times 10 raised to negative 5. Then you have the bulk convective uh, uh, heat transfer. So you have uh, constant. So you have this one here in per Kelvin, and this one here is in per Rankin. Now, where is this particular value of 2.45 times 10 raised to negative? Let me check. Okay, I cannot see any more. Negative 3 taken from. So it's per Kelvin. Uh, what particular temperature was inverted in here to give this value of 2.45 times 10 raised to negative 3? Uh, can you check? Is it the film temperature? Is it the bulk temperature? Correct. It's that of the film temperature because as it says here, the physical properties should be based on or evaluated on the film temperature. So you have this one. Um, in the case of, notice again that in the case of the English unit class, you need to multiply the film temperature with the, uh, you can see in here in the Rankin unit or this one, you have 1.37 times 10 raised to negative 3. Now it's in Rankin. So what's done in here is that you have added the 460 constant to the Fahrenheit film temperature here to convert it in Kelvin. Whereas in here, since it's already in Kelvin, it's more straightforward, direct. So the reciprocal only of 1, or rather of 408.2. Your delta T is the difference between the wall temperature and the bulk temperature of the fluid. Okay, so it's 350 in Fahrenheit and in Kelvin, it's 194.4. The Grasshoff unit, in, rather the Grasshoff number in English units is evaluated using this particular formula. So anyway, everything here is substitution. So you have one foot. For density, this is also in English. For G, notice that your G now is being multiplied to 3,600 being squared. Then this uh, beta, the 1.36, this one here, times 10 raised to negative 3, and your delta T, which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We divide it to the Centipua unit in viscosity, which was converted to pound mass per foot per hour. Okay, and this is your Grasshoff number in English. Your Grasshoff number in SI would be this one. Units, okay, everything the same, but only the set of units that are being used. Oh, sorry. Now, the Grasshoff numbers calculated using the English and SI units must, of course, be the same as shown. So what you're going to do, you multiply these two values here. So uh, Grasshoff number in English, uh, frontal number also in English. Grasshoff number in SI, frontal number also in SI. If you're going to multiply the two, the value is 1.27 times 10 raised to 8. Okay, this is the value, 1.27 times 10 raised to 8. If you're going to go back to the table, 
for a vertical plane or cylinder of vertical height less than one meter, we're going to find the range or the value. We are to find uh, amongst these three, these three value, which uh, does your computed value fall into. So it's not less than 10 raised to four. It's not greater than 10 raised to nine. It's actually somewhere in here because our exponent in our answer is eight. Uh, wait, right here. 1.27 times 10 raised to 8. So you'll be using the second, sorry, class, the second set of value. This one, 10 raised to 4 minus 10 raised to, uh, no, uh, 2, 10 raised to 9. So your set of values for A and M will be this one. Okay, the point 59 and 1 fourth. And that would be the A and the M value that you will substitute to the formula. So you have here a simplified form, naka derived na initial class, the simplified form of the nasal number where uh, the formula of H was derived from. So from the nasal number, we have H equal to KL then times this expression here. The A times the quantity uh, Grasshoff number times the frontal number raised to M. So you have the value of the K in English, which is uh, 0 0.0198. And for the length in course, it's one foot, so it's one. Then you have A here. This is the A. Let me just annotate. So this is your A. And this is your M. And your product for NGR and NPR would be uh, 1.27 times 10 raised to 8. Okay. Sorry, class. May bata. Di nag daddy. Anyway, so you have this one. And this is the corresponding value of the heat transfer coefficient. Now, in SI, this will be the set of units. And this will be the value. Uh, you just change the values that you substitute to this formula using the SI values as well. So this is your H already. Now, for a one foot width of a wall, one foot ng iyang width, one feet ma, uh, one foot man ng iyang length, so your, uh, your area will be one square feet. In meters, of course, that would be 0 0.305 times 0 0.305, giving you a unit in square meter. Now, your H now will be computed based on the uh, standard formula for convective heat transfer, which is HA uh, times the difference of the wall temperature and the bath temperature. So you just use the appropriate H value here if you're working on SI units or English units. So for English units, this will be our answer. Uh, working on the temperatures 450 and 100. And in the case of the SI, we have the difference of 194 uh, in Kelvin already. And the H that you will use in SI is 7.03. Your area here is 0 0.305 times 0 0.305. In here, your area is just one because it's now in square feet, okay? For this particular problem class, it's just substitution actually to the formula. It's just important that you know where you get your values and what's the basis for those values. Any question? None? Okay, let me proceed. Now... In here, there's a need for you to determine the Grasshoff number and then use the formula uh, of the Nusselt number to find the heat transfer coefficient. But there's actually a simplified way of finding the heat transfer coefficient. Uh, I'll give it to you in the form of a table as well as presented in our text. So this is also for vertical planes and cylinders. However, class, if you have read our uh, book, 
uh, this is only limited for the fluid air. So meaning if uh, your fluid is not an air anymore, you cannot use this particular uh, simplified equations because this will only work for air. So you still have here the physical geometry, okay? In here, the second column will give you the product of the Grasshoff number and the frontal number. And you have here the equation to use, okay? Uh, equations for H, the L, and the D. Uh, in this case, class in here, what you have is just the H, the simplified formula for the H. Now, the first part of the table, as I have mentioned, let me just annotate, will work only for air. You see this one, air. Then you have a very limited choice of simplified equation for water below. Other fluids are not anymore uh, given in here. So meaning if it's other fluids, you cannot use the simplified equation. So this one, this set is for vertical planes and cylinders. This one is for horizontal cylinders. Uh, let me use uh, different. So for horizontal cylinders, duha siya class ka bilog. This one, two sets of values for products of class half number and frontal number for vertical planes and cylinder also too. Okay, uh, just be very careful on reading as to what particular geometry is the set value applicable to in the use of this particular table. So, okay, you have air here and you have water. Okay, at one atmosphere pressure. Now, when you use empirical equations class and when you use tables that simplify the uh, computation, there's actually a next paragraph to it that explains the limitation of such or the limitation of the use of such particular formula or table. And I will have it shared to you on the next page. Okay, so simplified equations for natural convection, which I have shown to you in the form of a table, from air to vertical planes and cylinders, this is only for one atmosphere pressure. Okay, take note of this. What if it's not one atmosphere pressure? There's going to be some form of a correction. So may gamiton kang a correction. Now, in SI units, the equation for the range of the product of Grasshoff number and frontal number of uh, 10,000 to 1 billion is the one usually encountered. So this is the usual case, just like in the sample problem, uh, 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 9. And this holds for uh, L cube delta T values below about 4.7 cubic meter Kelvin. Um, if the range of values of your Grasshoff number and frontal number falls within this range class, the product of L cube to delta T is below 4.7 cubic meter Kelvin. And the film temperature is normally between the film temperature that will be solved given the data in the problem is between 255 and 533 Kelvin. To correct the value of the H to pressures other than 1 atm, the values of H in table 7, 4.7-2 uh, can be multiplied by this. So please take note of this class. If the pressure is other than 1 atm, okay? Now, when is this particular corrective set of quantities applicable? So for, for, amulang manisha class, so for this range of Grasshoff and frontal number product, uh, 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 9. So this is your... Uh, this is for this range. Now you use this one. Please quiet. You use this one for a product of the Grasshoff number and frontal number greater than 1 billion. So this is your correction for this range. For 1 billion, this is your correction. Where pressure 
here where P in pressure is in uh, kilopascal because this is kilonewton per square meter. So let me clear my markings class. Ha? I will simplify. This is your correction for this one. And this is your corrective for this one. So amo na siya ang inyo multiplier. Multiplier nyo if the pressure is other than one atmosphere. Okay, the value of H uh, in English units, the range of the Grasshoff number, frontal number of again 10,000 to 1 billion can also be encountered when L cubed delta T is less than about so common in siya class ng imo nga products ang L cubed delta T is less than 300 cubic feet a degree Fahrenheit. Now, this time, the value of H can be corrected to pressures other than 1 atm by multiplying the H by uh, P raised to 1 half at this range of NGR and PR product and P raised to 2 thirds for NGR and PR product above 1 billion. In here, your P, your pressure should have a unit in atmosphere. Ang isa tuya kaina, ang unit is kilopascal, but this one is in atmosphere. Now, simplified, simplified equations are also given for water and other organic liquids. So, every class ang sa aton table, kaina as shown to you, is only water aside from air. The other organic liquids, you can check with what's available in your handbook. Okay, that's your part already. You find out, you, uh, you try to check in your handbook what's the table to use if other organic liquids other than water is flowing past vertical planes or cylinders. So take note of what is stated in this particular paragraph. Plus, it goes with the use of the table, uh, the simplified tables for H, computing for H. Okay, there's a problem in the book that gives us or illustrate the use of the uh, simplified table. So let's say we're going to repeat the same sample problem, but this time uh, we will use um, the simplified table or the table that uses the simplified equations, set of equations. So the film temperature is 408.2 Kelvin, which is in the range of 255 to 533 Kelvin. This is already stated. The way it's stated, class, is it's a common thing to be observed that when your product of Grasshoff number and frontal number is within the range of 10 to 4, to 10 raised to 9, amu magin ni siya, dari ni siya naga fall ang temperature. In the case of our problem, it's 408.2. Let me just go back to that particular sample problem. This one. Okay? So, our, if you recall, our NPR, NGR product is, uh, where is that? 1.27 times 10 raised to 8, and it's within the range that is stated of 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 9. So, common na siya nga ma-observe na value. So, this one within this range, and also the product of the L cube delta T is 5.5. Now, this is slightly greater than the value of 4.7 given as the approximate maximum for use of the simplified equation. So, ang atun nga na masolve yung product since sining L cube and delta T is 5.5, which is greater slightly greater than the value of 4.7. It's okay. However, in the example, the value of NGR and NPR is below 10 raised to 9. So the simplified equation from table 4.7-2 will be used. Now we'll go back to table uh, 4.7-2 and check this particular formula. Look very closely to this formula. 1.37, then the delta T to L ratio raised to one fourth. Um, in the simplified table, you have vertical planes in cylinders. This is where our example number one falls into. The frontal number and Grasshoff product is within this range, but it's greater than 10 raised to nine. 
So you will use the equation that is stated there, which is 1.20, uh, this one, rather this one, this is the first one. Range of 10 raised to four minus 10 range to 10 raised to nine. This is the corresponding formula that you're going to use, okay? Now, why would we use this means? Because we're working on SI units. I'm wanting set of formulas for SI units. Case as in a column, do have a set of units. This is for SI and this is for English. So you just find this particular range of NGR, NPR product and find the appropriate formula for H. This is more direct. Hindi ka na mag-separate, solve, pasang Grasshoff number, kagbalik sa Nasselt number to get the H. So the H formula is 1.37 times the ratio of delta T to L raised to one fourth. That's the same formula plus that I have read in here, sorry. In here in the uh, problem, the sample problem. So your H value here is 6.88 watt per square meter kelvin how does it compare to the h that we have solved in sample problem number one so that's 6.88 in here you have 7.03 i think in terms of error it's not really that much and remember that that one is a simplified formula only so but the most accurate or the more accurate of the two is this one still Okay, so you have 6.88 compared to 7.02 in the original sample problem. Okay, uh, please close the door. And your heat transfer rate Q then would be still solved using this particular formula. This time you're going to use the H that you got from the simplified equation in the table. So you have your 6.88, you have the area, which is 0 0.305, then 0 0.305. This one is the difference between the wall temperature and the bulk temperature. This is your heat transfer rate. The 124.4 watt, uh, if it's going to be compared to example number one, it's 127.1. I think in terms of error, it will not go higher than 5%, uh, maybe even lesser than that. So this is, this one is acceptable. In our case class, if it's not stated that you will use the simplified formula given in table uh, 4.7 to use the original formula that will require you to determine first the Grasshoff number and then use the nozzle number in determining the H. So that's just, that one is just for simplifying the table 4.7 dash two set of formulas. Okay, any question before I proceed? Okay, so anyway, you will just have to get the properties and then substitute a set of formula. Now for horizontal cylinders, so notice class that the, the first two sample problem talks about a vertical wall, okay? Or, or that's also applicable to a vertical cylinder. So what about if it's horizontal? Now, you may say, Timis, may add to naman to sa table 4.7 dash 2 ng simplified uh, formula in determining the age for horizontal cylinders. Okay, Miara, dito. Let me show it to you. Miara siya for horizontal cylinders, okay? And this one also horizontal plates. And this one is for water already. Vertical plates only, no horizontal orientation for water. So you can use this class if it's stated in the problem. If not, you will have to really use this set of formula again. It's comparable anyhow to the one that is being used in uh, vertical cylinders. So A and M are still constants in here. And you still have the gas of numbers, the same thing. Same table to use as with vertical cylinder. The D is used for L in the equation, and this will work for, as I have mentioned, a range of value for the gas of number and frontal number 10,000 to 1 bill uh, 2. Uh, I think this one is kulang zero because it's 10 raised to 9. So I 
uh, there's a typo error in my case there. So that should be 1 billion. Now for horizontal plates, this will be your formula. Same table to use as vertical cylinder. L is to be used for length of the side of the square plate. The linear mean in the case of a rectangle. Okay. Kung square, wala ta problema, kaya ang lengths of all sides are the same. But in the case of a rectangle, you're going to get the linear mean. What does this mean? You will just simply get L plus W and divide it by 2. That should be the L that you will be substituting for the formula. And in the case of a circular disk, take note of this, uh, you have a horizontal circular disk in this case. Okay, horizontal lang iya orientation. It's going to transfer and there's going to be heat transfer occurring to it or from it to a particular fluid. This is the orientation and it's circular. So the L that you're going to substitute is equivalent to 90% of the diameter of that circular disk. Okay, for a circular disk. The same formula as this one. Now for enclosed spaces, um, totally enclosed spaces, this will be your Grasshoff number. And this particular const, uh, sorry, parameter here or constant should be given in the problem. The problem should give you this value or give you a place, uh, give you a table that will uh, give you the value of this particular parameter in here. But oftentimes class in convective, natural convective heat transfer, oftentimes it's not an enclosed space. Normally natural convection uh, happens in open space where uh, everything will just, the cooling of something or the heating of something will just occur naturally. So this is very seldom. The most uh, common type of uh, natural convection, free convection that is, is for open spaces, okay? Now, the Nusselt number in here, I gave you already the Grasshoff number. The Nusselt number in here, for enclosed spaces will be given by this formula. You see this symbol again. And the heat flux is calculated using the, the same formula for convective heat transfer. The A was just transferred uh, in here because it's heat flux. So it's still, uh, heat transfer is still Q equal to HA times the difference between T sub one and T sub two. In this case, class the order is like T sub one minus T sub two get. Now the physical properties are to be evaluated at the mean temperature between the two plates, okay? Uh, the two plates that are being mentioned in this particular orientation. This is your T sub one and this is your T sub two. This is the length of the plate and this is the thickness of this particular plate. Oftentimes, class, kung ang plate as per design na hambal na sa problem, ang value, sining, uh, what is the uh, symbol of this? I forgot. Derak delta, I think, or delta siya. Then there's no need for you to look for it in a table. But there are plates that are uh, supplied, uh, excuse me, small delta. Okay, small delta. Thank you, Dexter. So if it's a small delta, and if the problem gives you it, no problem. Pero as I have said a while ago, kung mga plates balaklas nga bought as uh, as is, like my specific dimension na siya, my table, man na siya nga ginaprovide ang problem where you can get the delta of such plates. But oftentimes, the problem will give you this. If it's not pre-manufactured, if it's not a pre-manufactured plate. So small delta according to uh, deck cell. So this, uh, where am I? The physical properties are to be evaluated at the average temperature of the two plates, T1 and T2. And the nozzle number here uh, for gases enclosed between vertical plates in which the ratio of the length to the thickness of the plate is greater than three. So puro naman ni tanan plus empirical formulas. This will be the Nusselt number uh, formula that you're going to use. You use this one for 
the product of NGR and PR less than 2000. You use this one if the product of the two falls on this range. You use this one if it falls on this range. So, depende kung di in a range nag-fall ang product ni NGR and PR. Okay? So, pick the appropriate formula. This set, the first set is for gases. For liquids, on the other hand, you have these two formulas to choose from, whichever is applicable as to the, the value of the NGR and PR product. Now, for gases or of liquids in a vertical annulus, the same equation holds as for vertical plates. So you're going to use the vertical plates formula. This one, the first set for gases or liquids in vertical annulus. You know what an annulus is? You know what an annulus is? Anybody is... Do you know what an annulus, the term annulus zero? Okay, you, you will not know when to use the same formula that is given on top if you don't know what an annulus is. What's an annulus? Gases or liquids in vertical annulus. Annu, annulus? This uh, one is uh, no, mentioned in, I think, solid mensuration when I was a student, the first time I encountered it. Anybody who knows what an annulus is? Okay, so when you speak of an annulus class, if you have a cylinder, two concentric cylinders, common centers, the space, the hollow space in between the two cylinders is what we call an annulus. So let's say this one, this is a cylinder and I have another cylinder here. The space in between these two is the annulus. So if you have a gas or liquid in a vertical annulus, the same equation holds for vertical plates. So amone siyang gamiton. Okay, this one is for liquids and this one is for gases. Now, for gases and horizontal plates with lower plate hotter than the upper, mas, ang, mas init ang lower plate kaysa sa upper plate, ang muna man yung nasalt number ang inyong gamiton na formula. For liquids and horizontal plates with lower plate hotter than the upper plate, uh, this one is for gases, this one is for liquids. The same orientation. Lower plate is hotter than the upper plate. So you just choose which of the two uh, formulas here will you, will you use. Plus, by the way, ang nasalt number dire, ang nasalt number dire, amuning formula, no? You will still equate it with HL over K. Okay, it's for you to be able to find the H because in here, we are interested always with the heat transfer coefficient. So in siya nga mga formulas, nga pilili anyo, i-equate yung mangyapon sa HL over K. That way you can find the H that you will substitute in here to your heat flux equation or your to heat transfer rate equation. And we're almost done class. I'll just finish borrow some minutes. And this will be your sample problem for natural convection in an enclosed vertical space. It's also available in Janku, please, if you have a soft copy. Can you just please read this one? I think this is the last one. That way, tomorrow, tomorrow I will just leave you a recording for radiative heat transfer. Okay? Uh, even though if you're still attend, uh, we are attending the convention, you can message me if there's something that you will encounter that's quite difficult for you to follow to in terms of what's available in Janku, please. Okay? I'll stop sharing now. Uh, any question, class? Anything that you would like to raise? Any concern? Okay. Please read the last sample problem in Jan Kupis. Anyhow, I'm sure that for some of you, majority of you will be able to manage even me without discussing this to you. Okay? Uh, okay. Ano lang siya. Ang importante sa mga semi-empirical equations class is is ako gasala. Ako muna nga ginakopya. Ako na lang gintuto kung ano available sa book. Is 
you should know the limitation of a particular formula. Sa diin lang siya nga condition ma-work. Kag diin mo pangitaon ang mga values, ang parameters nga nag-appear sa iya. Okay, the rest is just substitution to the set formula. Amula na siya ang challenge sa unit. Oops. Not so much to critically think about. Just know the formula to use and where to find the things that you will substitute on it. Majority of the error of the student is they don't know the limitation of a particular formula. They don't know where to find the things that they will substitute to the formula. Amulan ang gapadugay sa ila. But if you fully know the procedure, I'm, I'm emphasizing here, it's all about the procedure. There's, there's no problem with unit ops being failed because uh, other subjects are even difficult than unit operations. The problem with unit ops is not knowing where to get the values that you will substitute. In the first place, not knowing the formula that you will use. Okay? I've again eaten five minutes of your time. I will uh, uh, give you the link in Canvas for tomorrow's class and work on the problem sets that you need to work on during the uh, dry lab schedule. Okay? Bye for now, class. Have your lunch now. We have lunch Thank now. You, okay, okay. Bye-bye.